And we are live. So let's actually do this shindig. This is, oh, I just took myself on the microphone. Hopefully that microphone's still coming through. <laughs> Make sure, testing. Uh, just ripped my microphone off. Mm, nice, that's a great way to start a video off. <laughs> Put that away. Okay, let's actually get into this thing. Um, so, today we're going to be doing a live, and I'm probably going to be here for um, a few hours. I'm guessing four to six hours-ish, um, depending upon how long this actually takes. And uh, um, I, I'm actually going to re-edit this whole video later um, so that it can be just a regular video. Um, but for right now, we're going to be doing the, the live version of it. So the, the re-edit will be kind of weird because shooting from just one angle and re-editing is going to be very interesting. Uh, my wife will be coming and going uh, throughout the day. So if you want to have questions for her, go for that. Um, and I'm going to be um, trying to show things from both camera angles and basically having a laid back session here. So if you guys have any questions or anything that comes up, then we can uh, kind of shoot the breeze or do other things. But today we are going to be making a grooving plane. Um, this is one of the first tools that I ever made was this glo grooving plane. And this is completely out of focus. Let me adjust this down. Focus, there we go. And uh, this is a quarter by quarter by quarter grooving plane. So it's a quarter inch deep, a quarter inch wide, a quarter inch in the outside. It has a fence here and it was made with a chisel. Uh, a relatively easy thing, I made this out of a block of firewood and we're going to be doing uh, the same thing today. On this one I actually um, I, uh, I hurt the, the fence on it so I planed off the fence and then glued on another piece here so I could get what I needed out of it. Um, and I've got a couple different pieces of firewood to work through here. This one is almost exactly the right size. It's a little bit too thin but it would be very very easy to do this one because I just have to plane one side flat and then plane the other side parallel and I've got a block I can work with. But not everyone has a block like that, so I'm thinking I'm going to use uh, this block today. Uh, the only downside with this one, let me see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is, uh, I want to see the rays in this. So on, on this block here, you can see the, the rays coming through from this white oak, and I love that on the sides. It just makes it look really special and nice. So I want to do that with this one, but that means the rays are coming straight up the center here, and then out here on the side, they're coming off at an angle and off at an angle. So if I, if I take it off of the side here, I'm not going to see as many of those rays. If I take it right out of the middle, then I'm going to see more rays. But this end is a little bit too small to take it out of the middle. And this end is pretty close to it. So I think I'm going to take it right out of the middle of this block. So basically like that right out of this. And that is going to mean a lot more preparation, uh, sawing, fro work, and other things along that line, which should make this kind of fun. So I think we're going to be using this block. Uh, I always thought it would be cool. <laughs> yes. Twins would be interesting. We had three kids in three years, and that was enough. But uh, Oh yeah, for the iron, I'm going to be using this uh, wooden handle Harbor Freight chisel. Um, because now I have a bunch of extra chisels that I don't need anymore since I got my Richter. <laughs> so uh, this will be our, our, our iron for it. So a cheap quarter inch chisel. And we're going to make a quarter inch by quarter inch by quarter inch grooving plane. Um, and I'm thinking I might actually give one, I might actually give this away when I'm done. Uh, so if someone wants this, maybe we'll do a drawing at the end of this video. Uh, let's see, would walnut or cherry be good for this? Yeah. Um, traditionally, the best wood is European beech. Um, that's what m most plain bodies were made out of when they were made to be uh, the, the best user you could possibly get. Um, in America, it's usually hard maple, um, that or American beech. Um, but honestly, there really isn't a good or bad wood for it. I like white oak because it, I just like the look of it. But the problem with white oak is it's a very stringy wood, and it, 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 if, um, if it's left to dry out, it splinters apart quickly. Um, maple would probably be the best wood, um, but whatever wood you have. Cherry would be great, walnut would be great. Um, cherry and walnut are going to wear out a little bit faster because they're a little softer, uh, but they'll still give you years of use, so they're, uh, they're pretty good. And with how quick one of these are to make up, it's, it's not that big of an issue. Um, 
Cool. So, uh, I've got this block here, and I'm, I'm considering two different ways of doing this. Number one, I can use a fro and slice one side of it down, plane that off, and then cut the other side. Or number two, I can start with a saw and cut it. Uh, a saw is a little bit more accurate, it will give me a straight line, but a fro will allow me to go with the wood. Um, the other thing I need to do is the, before I, I go about cutting it up, I want to actually cut it closer to its final length. And most molding planes are nine and a half inches long. Uh, that's the roughly standard length, nine and a half inches. Um, I made this one at 10 inches, and it really doesn't matter exactly what the length is, but nine and a half is about, um, about normal. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna pull this out of here, and I want that to that, let me see how tall are we there. Yeah, I should still be able to get that out of there. It's gonna be a little bit shorter, but we can work with that. Um, cool, so let's come in, I'm gonna come in like 10 and a half inches, that gives me an inch worth of leeway. And we'll grab my pencils. My pencils is gone! I'll blame my kids. Well, I'll use this knife. Um, so I'm gonna come in 10 and a half inches and I'm just gonna be cutting off. Actually, because this is so close, yeah, because this is so close, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it and then cut it later. Um, you usually wanna cut it to length so that you're not flattening out more than you need, but I really, it's only about three inches longer than I need. So we're going to throw this first. Uh, would it be better to use, say, a 3 8 chisel so that there were some overlap of the cutting edge? Or am I missing something? Um, well, you can make a grooving plane whatever groove you want to make. Uh, most common for drawer bottoms for me is quarter inch. I know a lot of people who do 3 8 drawer bottoms, um, but whatever you want. Um, I like quarter by quarter. It's just a, a good size. So let me grab my fro. Fro. And we are going to slice this up. Let's see. Do I need to sharpen that? Yeah, it's good enough for what we need today. So um, I'm going to look at this in the grain. I'm going to see where do I want this to actually come out. And remove the fro ever so slightly outside of that because I don't want. Uh, I don't want to go overboard. Also, I'll notice that the grain is swooping this way. So if I, if I cut it here, it's probably going to cut in a little bit down below, and then it'll come back out. Uh, this side looks pretty straight. So there's just a little bit of compression down in here. So I'm going to stay away from that and try and pull it out of like right here. So let's put the fro right there. And then let's bash this sucker down in there. Now I would like to have a fro mallet, but I don't have one down here. And we will work with what we've got though. And just like that, we got ourselves a fresh board. And look at that grain figure on there. Isn't that purdy? That's purdy. Me like that. Here, let me switch over and show you the guys this. There. Let me see that. See the rays coming through there. And so now I want to see can I get it out of right there? And that's pretty close. But I think I want to move it over again. And this this green is really nice and straight. That won't take much at all to flatten out. Um, and I want to move it over a little bit closer to the side because it's bigger over here than it is here. So not by that much, but by enough. Yeah, so I'm gonna throw it again. Throw it, throw it, <laughs> I'm gonna throw it again. Just gonna move it over to right about there. And we'll see how this comes out. Oops, switch over, sorry. Camera angle. Mm, go a little farther. Oop. It fell out. The bottom fell out. <laughs> Should be enough. Let's see if the grain's running the direction I want. Yep, we're good. Boom. 
There we go. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Now I've got this piece that I can actually make something out of. And hey, I might be able to do like a quarter inch piece out of this in the future. Nice thing about ribbon wood is that because it runs with the grain, I know that the fibers in here are running from one end all the way to the other, and I'm getting really, really strong grain across this. So I'll probably save these and hold on to them for future uses. Let's see, it goes that way, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and this is the one we're going to be working with. So set the fro aside. Let the pile of tools that have been used start to build up on the bench. Uh, I made a rabbit plane out of birch. Seems to work well. Yeah, birch is pretty good. Birch is a little bit soft, but still a great wood and really easy to work with hand tools. I love birch. Actually, I'm going to be, I have a birch tree in my front yard I'm going to be cutting down uh, later. And so I'm going to be actually showing a video cutting it down, trimming it apart, and turning it into lumber with just hand tools. I thought that'd be kind of a fun video, but it'll be birch. Um, cool. So now we've got this. <clears throat> The next thing I need to do is I need a flat and true side to work with. So either I can flatten off this side or I can flatten off this side. I'm trying to see if it really matters which side I flatten off. It really doesn't. So I'm actually going to stick with this side. And before I do that, I want to actually cut it to length because I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to have excess on there that I don't need. So um, I want to make this nine and a half inches, but I want to get rid of this stuff at the beginning. It's a little bit of black there. So we're going to come out to somewhere around here. So I'm going to eyeball this cutting off at this point and we'll trim it back later. So throw this in the vise and have a little bit of fun here. Ah, everybody needs a good vice in their life. <clears throat> And let's actually use the cheap saw. The cheap saw, plastic handle junk. I like doing things with cheaper tools when possible. Just showing you don't need good quality stuff. Good quality stuff is nice, but it's not necessary. When doing big cross grain cuts, uh, it's not as big a deal. Let me switch over to this one. Show you guys a little bit more of what's going on here. Where's my, oh. There it is. It's hiding on me, too. Okay, there. Let's cut this thing apart. Ta-da! Smaller block, not a bigger block. So now it is approximately the same length. It's a good bit too thick. And so what I want to do is I want to flatten out one surface, get one edge nice and true, and then I can measure everything off of that nice edge. So let's throw this in the clamp. And because it's an organic shape, it's really hard to clamp because I don't have anything holding this end. It's actually pinching it right here. So what I can do is grab some shims or other thin wood stock and I can slide that in and let me see if I got another shim down here if I do good and this will allow it to have pressure on both ends just pound those in a little bit and then we can clamp that down now I have a good clamping pressure all the way across this so I can work on it so uh, grab my four and a half I think you're good to go yeah and the four and a half has a really heavy cut on it right now, taking off a pretty solid amount here. Yeah, let's actually get to the scrub plane first. It's a little bit more than I thought. So with the scrub plane, I'm just eyeballing the high spots right now. And this whole piece is actually really well twisted. So this end is up at an angle like this, and this is here. Actually, let me put the winding sticks on there and show you. So I'll need those in a little bit. So this one is somewhere around there, and this one's somewhere around there, so you can see the twist in it. So I want to focus on the high spot right here and across this side, and there's a little bit of a high spot over here. I want to get those down and just get this into a flat plane.
Okay. Let's see how close we are to that. Ish, ish, ish. And this way, yeah, this way we got to get a bit of work. We're high right across here. Oh, no wonder. Like, why is this taking such a small shaving? For some reason I backed the iron off on it a good bit. I think the time has come to sharpen this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's all jammed up. I haven't sharpened that one in about a year. So that's why I have multiple planes. Hey, the star of the show has arrived. Hello. No clogs today. What? They said no clogs today. Oh, yeah, no, I forgot to put them on. Oh. I was just outside. Shame. Hmm, nicked up my finger there. All right, let's see where we're at now. Eh, pretty good ish. Yeah, let's see what we are level wise, winding stick wise. Oop. Still a little high over there, really high in the middle. So it's got to take off a little bit here. And with a winding stick like that, it might just be one bump that's lifting it up one side or the other. So I'm going to do that. Now the grain of this is now running this way. <clears throat> so I've got to plane it this way. Yeah, it's getting close to flat. No, I'm loving this ray figure in here. Let me zoom in and show you what we got going on here. This is pretty. See if I can get You're pointing the you. camera in the wrong direction. What? <laughs> Took you a little second to get that a little yeah, longer than it should have. <laughs> You've missed Oops. having me here. <laughs> there we go. Now you can start to see that ray figure in there. That's what I'm looking for. So we've got a little bit of tear out here i got to get rid of. Let's see how close we are to wind free and flat. Eh, pretty close. Still a little bit high over in that corner. We can fix that. We still got to get rid of this tear out. So. Now, now that exposed this crack here opening up. So I have to see if I want to get rid of that or if that will just disappear in the finish. They still have to take off about a half inch from this end. And now we're actually, uh, it's pretty good. That is within tolerances. That's good, I like that. And we're good that way. So for the sake of what we have going on right now, I'm going to call this flat. I could do a little bit more detail on it, and I will do a little bit more as we go on. But for right now, this will work for me and give me a reference I can work off of. The next thing I need is a bottom or a top for this. Now normally, this is the outside of the tree. This is the inside of the tree. You can see the rays coming out from here. Normally, you want the bark to be down. That is the uh, historical way to do it. So we're going to make this the bottom of the plane. We're going to make this the top. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to mark off a line where the top of the plane will be. So back this up, grab me a straight edge and an all use this saw as the edge here and I'm going to mark a line right across here.
There. Now. Before you go any further, it what's just that? is like ever so slightly out of focus. Like it doesn't know where to focus. That's because I hadn't focused it. Now I'm going to put this. That's good. Well, I'll, I'll change it in this moment. I'm going to set this up. Any questions right now? Or? Um, yes, Clockman45 wants to know, are the kids driving you nuts being out of school so long? Uh, yes and no. Um, no more than they would in summertime. But the, the nuts part is doing the homeschooling. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people are talking about all this extra time on their hands because I, I'm about the busiest I have been in a long time. And haven't been able to do as much woodworking as I want. <laughs> Mostly just because we're getting the kids up and running and homeschooling. And uh, Sarah has been working like a mad woman. <laughs> so. Oh, I, I have a day off. I'm so excited. Yes. They haven't called you in and yet. And I'm, well, actually, I'm just working my non paying job right now. <laughs> I pay you? Yes. I kissed you this morning, didn't I? And pizza and. Well, it would be Chinese if they weren't closed. Uh, why are all the Chinese restaurants closed? I haven't figured that out yet. Everyone's Chinese places are closed. So, um, I got this line I want to come down to, and I have a couple options. Number one, I could plane it down to that, or number two, I could saw it down to that. Um, sawing, sometimes a little bit faster, sometimes a little bit slower. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do here. No, I'm going to plane it down. I'm going to plane it down. So let's actually draw some lines on here. Grab a square and go off from that line that I just drew and draw across the ends. This way I know where I can come down to on this line, this side. I have a question. What's that? It, it's very important. Landon Marks wants to know, what's been keeping you busy besides kids? You don't know our children very well then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it, it hasn't been, ha just having kids at home hasn't been keeping me busy, but it was, we started homeschooling and then our, our school system said, okay, we're going to do schoolwork from home, but their schoolwork from home requires a lot of parent input. Um, and so it's just been a lot of back and forth. But yeah, no, just keeping up with the business has... Um, I haven't been able to put as much time into wood by right as I normally do, which is kind of sad. Because normally the kids are at school and I've got all the time I need. Okay, let's play in. No, I'm going to saw it. I'm going to saw it down. Yeah, that's not so Sam Wise super chatted for Sarah's Frontliner Coco Fun. He's hel he's helping Alan out. <laughs> and I came prepared with lots of mom jokes today. Ooh, we got mom jokes. And we got mom jokes because I, I knew. She knows things. So... What did the one tectonic plate say when they bumped into another one? Uh-oh. What is it? Sorry. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my uh, my four PPI oh uh, my. handsaw. They're getting loud up There's here. something physical going on up there. And I'm staying a uh, 16th inch or so away from the line and I'll plane back to it. My bench is in the wrong place. I'm running into this over here. Let's see if I can move it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. the other end so I can tell my natural instinct is to twist away from the line so I'm saving more material so the back the front side on my side is right on the line I'm telling the other side is probably off the line but because I don't have a line over there it's hard to tell and I can't have a line over there because it's still the rough wood
this one's far more on the line. But because the first one twisted off, I'm going to have a bit of a schmoo between them. And I'll show you how bad my schmoo is. See, I didn't point the camera at you this time. No comment? I honestly did not hear. Good. You. But you know that your <laughs> lovely, um, with my right family, will tell and tattle on you in a few moments. <laughs> there. So. Well, what are my children saying now? Oh. Gotta get rid of this right here. Where do I put that? Oh, there it is. Grab the scrub plane. And right about here, I notice there's a knot. <clears throat> not what I want to see, but not bad, just. All right, are you trying to be on that camera that you are right now? What's that? You're on like the far away, not up close. Oh, sorry. There you go. There you go. So I've got a knot in here, and it's deeper than I wanted. I saw this one coming across. I thought I may have missed it, but apparently not. So, oh well, knot just means a little more work. Not a horrible thing, but not a great thing. Whoa. Okay, now the important thing with this is not that this is flat and twist free, which is what we're looking for, but we want it to be 90 degrees to this face. So, put this on here, and you can see. So most of this area, I'm high over here, and then I'm high over here. So we're gonna actually plane a little bit diagonal here, from here across this way, focusing on the high spot here, and the high spot here. See how that goes. Still high there and pretty good there. So, got one high spot right here. That's where this is just plunking up. Break that off. I'm just hitting the high spots. That plane's a little dull, but for the rough work, it's okay. Okay, that's good. Now, we are about the same angle all the way across, and we're just high along this edge. So a couple passes, and we should be good. Let's see how that came down. That is well within tolerances. So before we go any farther, we need to mark this. And my pencil is missing. Where did my pencil go? I don't know. Can I throw something at you? Uh, I guess we use this one. Mechanical fine pencil. So I want to mark this nope. because this is my this is my true edge. And this really fine pencil doesn't like going across the oak. So poor me wants to know what's a standard size for a chess board and is it required that you make your checker pieces for said board? I don't know what he's asking. I think a standard size for a chess set? I don't know. I have never done that. You built a case for our chess board. But you never yeah, I want to say each square is an inch and a half by an inch and a half. You think that? But I'm probably wrong. We have a glass one. Okay, so. There is my true uh, face and edge. Now, we need to start working on the other one. So either I could plane up the ends, actually I'm gonna have to cut this one off and plane this one up, <laughs> or number two, I could smooth this one out to be parallel with that, or number three, I could do this side. And I think I'm gonna do uh, the bottom here, or the top, because that is basically our plane right now. Um, or do I wanna rip it? Do, 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 do. You know, let's actually, let's rip it. Let's do the hard work first. Let's do the hard work first. So, 
I need to figure out how thick I want my molding plane. And what we've got, let me grab a chisel, is we've got a quarter inch chisel. Make my mark. And then I've got a quarter inch groove. And then I've got my fence. So how thick do I want my fence to be? Now, the, the fence isn't just about being thick. And in this case, this is the fence here. The fence is what gives rigidity to the whole plane. Um, if, the, if the fence is, is thick, that means that this whole thing is, because the problem is, over time, this plane may want to twist and bow. Having more material here will resist that twist and bow. So in this case, I'm going to make it about 3 quarters inch. So that means this needs to be an inch and a quarter. So actually, I'm going to move it out to an inch and 3 eighths. That'll give me a little bit of wiggle room. And I'm going to use this marking gauge to then run all the way around this. We're going to go right through that knot, right on the side of the board. That'll make for a fun cut. And even on the rough ends, let's go around that. Really hard to see on this side, but that's okay. It's a rough guess. As long as we can see it. What? I said it's a rough guess. Come on. She's in rare form today, folks. Come on. Come on. I have like a week and a half of pent up mom jokes. <laughs> I have a question for you when you're ready. What's that? Because Mercy44 asks, is planing green wood a bad idea or is it better to let the wood dry? Um, planing green wood is easier than planing dry wood. So it may be a good idea to plant it. Um, but understand that green wood will change as it dries and will um, reshape. So if you plane it now and you're expecting it to stay the exact same shape, you will be not as happy later. And so usually you want to plane it big when it's green. And then once it's dried, finish it off. The nice thing about planting when it's green is it's very, very easy to do. <clears throat> this stuff has been seasoning for about six years outside, if not more. Um, and so I actually just brought it inside so it's, it is just as um, wet as it was out there from the weather. Um, but because it's been drying for six years in the pile and a pile of firewood, it's relatively good. So it's going to change a little bit. So I'm going to leave it a little bit big so that I can come back and adjust it later. But for today, it'll make a grooving plane. So now we need to rip down that angle all the way across. Do the same thing again here. So put that in here. Grab me my big rip saw, which did I put away? Oh, I put it away. And we're going to go to town right on this line. So I'm cutting down an angle and watching the line on my side. Now I'm going to pull the saw out and I'm going to rotate the block around so that I can cut down on the opposite side and follow the line on the opposite side. This way I can stay nice and true on that line all the way down. Ooh, now we're getting down to that knot. And now we're down to about the cut on the opposite side. Pull it out. Turn it around and continue down. So Landon Marks wants to know, are you going to cut closer to the line due to the knot? Um, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm cutting right on that line right now. So it's right now at an inch and three eighths wide. Um, and I'm gonna stay as close to that line as I can. When I open it up, then I'll be able to see, you know, do I want to take off another eighth inch to get through that knot or do I just live with a knot? And this knot looks to be pretty solid, so I might just live with it. Add a nice aesthetic thing to the plane. Ooh. Is that knot 
knot. Yep, that knot. <laughs> It's twisting the wood a little bit. Well, Whoa. not that bad. <laughs> Knock some boards over. Welcome to the real wood by right. So I've cut down about uh, two thirds of the way, rotate it over, and cut from the other end. So Sandy has super chatted. Ooh, or hey, mom Sandy. jokes and cocoa. See, apparently they're all just here for me, not you. <laughs> um, okay. There's a reason I keep her around. <laughs> Excuse me, Mama. What? That you keep me around? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a mom joke in these repairs. It's one of the problems with sawing in a vise. This saw has a little bit of flexibility, and as I'm cutting into the end grain, once I get it started, all the teeth are catching in the end grain sticking up, and so it's catching it. So I need to go a little bit softer so it's not doing that. Ready? All right. I, Sandy's owed a mom joke. Can you keep uh, making So I'm saying noise? I'm ready. I'm ready. What does a clock do when it's hungry? What? It goes back four seconds. Oh, it goes back four seconds. All right, I got it, I got it. Here, let's put this down a little more. The other problem I'm having is because there's so little contact point with this, it's vibrating a bit more on the other end. That's a little better. One last flip around and we'll cut through. So and we'll see how accurate this cut is. In I don't know if one. you've answered this question. What's um, that? So Landon wants to know, are you trying to avoid planing that face by cutting close? Um, no, just cutting close to the line. I, I, I trust my cut when I have a line to view all the way around. I trust my cut enough that I know it's only going to take a few plain strokes to bring it back to perfectly flat. Um, so there really isn't a reason for me to stay away from it because I trust my saw work. Just like that. So let's see how clean the saw work is on this side. Because the other one I didn't have that line to go in, it always makes me want to twist off. But on this side, that's pretty decent. Just a few strokes and we'll be able to plane that down nice and flat. So, actually, before I, before I plane this down, I want to cut this side off. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let me just make sure I'm good this way, because I left it out. Okay, yeah, let's do a little bit more detail on that before I turn this off. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the marking gauge, and I'm going to run around. And if this edge isn't perfectly true, then this edge will mirror it and be off by a certain amount. And I forgot where I was off. I'm a little bit high here. I need to take off some from there. And the rest of it's pretty good, just a little bit here. And then I want to make sure it's straight from one side to the other. That's a really heavy cut. I'm going to take one more heavy cut and then I'm going to bring in my smoothing plane and do a detail on this. Let's actually bring this thing down to something nice. Oop, you're closed up. So let's bring in. Oh my. Oh yeah, I was last doing chamfering. That's why. Like, why is that so heavy all of a sudden? <laughs> we should check that first. Oh, I didn't change keyboards. More. I was like, why is it so loud? Taking off slight wisp. Want to take a little bit more than that? Okay. Let's see how we're getting there. 
Now that is what I'm looking for. Just do a little bit more trim up. Oh, I'm cutting myself, nice. There. That's what I'm looking for. Dead flat all the way across. And then let's check it with a straight edge to see. Good that way too. Okay, so this is nice and true now to this edge. So now we want to mark off the back of this. And I want it to be as big as it can be. And I'm also going to be chamfering these top edges too. So if there's a little bit sticking out, that's not a huge issue. But let's see. On this side, I can mark it at two. Can I get two and a quarter? No. Two and an eighth. So two and an eighth is over here. It's like way over there. Two and an eighth, two and an eighth. I'm just going to go all the way around this. Yeah, two and an eighth is about the lowest. So we're going to use that to mark all the way around this. And then we're going to saw off that face. I could plane it down. It's a little bit thick. Actually, let's go ahead and plane it down. I haven't planed down a face yet. So this is a bit thick here. But with a scrub plane, you can take off a good, good bit of material here. Move this around so you can see that line. Hopefully. Oops, we lost connection. Come back to me. Nope. Focus. Come on. Come on. There we go. Oh. And then let's focus this right on there. There we go. So I've got this line right here to come down to. Let me darken it up for you. Grab a pen. That's the line I have to plane down to. Is that my pen you stole again? Uh, no, this one says James on it. Does it? Yes. She's always accusing me of doing things. Why do I feel That's a glare? You usually are doing. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm high here, I'm just going to be focusing on the high spot. Often planing is faster, but using a saw will give you a usable piece in the future. So I've got a little less than a quarter inch, a little less than a quarter inch. A little more than an eighth inch. Just trying not to go over that line. Focusing on spots where I'm high. Trying to get it relatively flat and I'm going to do a couple passes. There. I don't want to get too much closer than that because I'm starting to get into the range of where the uh, curvature on this will cause issue. So, let's bring in this one. And get rid of those marks. Make sure we're still staying away from our line. Ooh, we're really close to the line on this side, so I need to focus more on this side over here. Really close to the line here. Just a little bit left over here. A little bit left all the way across there. Whoa. Boom shakalaka. Good gracious. Um, when okay. you get to a point, I have a question. Yeah, what's that? 
Landon wants to know what brand of planes you're using. Several seem to be old Stanleys. The smoothing yep. looks British. Um, almost all of my planes are Stanleys that I have restored, like this one. So if I've restored them and done a complete work on work down on them, I paint them my blue. Uh, but this one, this one is a Veritas custom plane. And if I could buy any plane as my absolute perfect favorite plane of all time, the Veritas custom plane is it. It just has so many bells and whistles and it's a beautiful plane that performs phenomenally. Yeah. Right on that line. So now, theoretically, now that I've come to that line all the way across, I should be able to come back to my original reference face and get a square line all the way across. Oh, that makes me happy. There we go. Now we have this side, this side, and this side perfectly true. This side cut down so we can plane it down to true. And all we have left of that knot is this little space right here. Um, and then we have to do the two ends. And then we can actually get into making the plane itself now that we're getting a blank. So let's smooth down this side. And we'll see where the grain's going on that one. The grain on this one is probably coming up to this knot and coming up to this knot, so I'll be going with the grain this way and against the grain the other way. But with this plane set up the way it is, that won't make too much of a difference. Oh no, I'm on this side of the knot, so let's turn it around. Going against the grain this way. <coughs> Here. All right, so Neon Joe 529 has a question. What's that? I have a pile of six by six beams from an old outdoor garden. Is there any risk of using these for a work bench top if some of them have pith? The, the wood is fairly old but solid. Yeah, those would be great. I'm assuming that they're pine, um, is that is what most big beams would be made out of. Those would make a really, really good bench. Children felt um, like they need <laughs> attention. And uh, my first bench over here is made out of Douglas fir pine, um, and it is a great beginner's bench. The nice thing about using a pine bench is that you're not going to be dinging up your work. The bench is softer than the work you're working with, so if you go like that, you're not going to hurt it on the bench. You might hit it when you drop the floor, but... Um, like that. There's a nice blank. So next thing we need to do is trim the ends down on this so that we get exactly what we want. So I left it about a half inch longer than it needs to be. So I'm going to start by marking all the way around this. Now let me give you a little tip here that a lot of people run into problems. When you want to mark a board all the way around, you pick your reference edge. So we have a reference face, a reference side, or a reference face, a reference edge, and I want to stay on this corner. So I'm referencing the fence of the square off of that corner, and I'm going to draw my mark. Now, I'm going to rotate it around, and because this is my reference face, I'm going to keep the fence of the square on that face, and I'm going to come around. Now, when I rotate it again, now my reference edge is on this side, not this side, so I need to flip the square around. I'm going to put it back into that mark. Mark that. Then we're going to rotate it again, and this is my reference face on this side. Put the mark into my starting mark over here. And just like that. Now I've got a line that runs all the way around the board and is perfectly true. So we're going to cut this off. Oop. And uh, then we will have one end of the plane, then we'll cut off the other end, and we will have a six-sided block. I'm going to grab my carcass saw. This is a Veritas uh, carcass saw. And Veritas is one of the, the more affordable brands, but still gives good quality. I really like their stuff. Staying on the line. And I can see the line on the top, and I can see the line on my side. So I'm going to cut a diagonal from corner to corner. Where 
where I can see the line. Then I can flip this over and cut the exact same diagonal again. And that way I'm only cutting where I can see the line. Ooh, just like that. And that there is a pretty flat square end. I'm going to see a little bit of a bump here where it last broke off. I will take that any day of the week. Cool. Well, there's one end. Now, I've got to actually go switch my shoes because these are annoying me. I put these on to go outside and pick up the firewood. Um, but I need my clogs. They're just so much more comfortable in here. So give me just a second here. Ah, much better. Cloggies. Ah. Now those are far more comfortable. And yes, I do wear clogs in the shop every day. And they're my uh, wooden clogs. Okay, so now we need to cut this to length. And we are going to cut it at uh, nine and a half inches, as that is the historical correct. Let me see if I can get nine and a half inches out of this. Uh, now we're going to make this one a little bit shorter. This one's going to be nine and a quarter inches. <gasps> we're breaking from tradition. Oh well. Nine and a quarter inches. Actually, I need to mark it on this edge because that's where we're starting from. So, nine and a quarter inches. Set up our square, make sure we're referencing off of our reference edge and face. That's what I need my stomach. Oh, sorry, I didn't bring that in. My leg was numb when I was upstairs. Should her feet dangle on the chair? It's the joys of being. The joys of shortnesses? Almost a midget. <laughs> One inch. All right. Did you catch up on these questions? No, I did not. All right, let's see. Go ahead and throw them. Uh, is Julio wants to know, is the Veritas a number four smoothing plane? Um, this is a Veritas number four custom plane. Um, any plane can be a smoothing plane. It just depends on how you set it up. Um, but yes, the number four is generally considered the smoothing plane. Um, all right, one of these days, I would love to get a full set of custom uh, Veritas custom planes because they're just, they're a beautiful plane that is done extremely well. And I'd like to have um, the four or five and jointer, um, but they are incredibly expensive. And it was enough just to get this one. Okay, so let's cut this one to length. And that will give us all six sides of our block. Any other question? Um, well, I think a lot of, yes, honey. <laughs> We've got kids. Beautiful. Okay, rotate this around. And there we go. We have our plane, or our plane body. So the next thing we need to do is start working on this. And we need to cut out all of the segments for this. Um, so in this case, this one's actually a little bit shorter, which isn't a problem because I'm gonna be adjusting the angle on this one. Um, so you can see here, body is a little bit shorter. Um, but that is okay because I didn't need all of that fence size. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make the chop in on this. So I want to cut down this side and then I want to cut in this side. So we're going to make this rabbit here. Um, now I could just go ahead and bring in my rabbiting plane and rabbit that down. But I don't want to make a plane with a, a rabbiting plane. Um, I want to show how to do it without that. So the first thing we're going to do is mark out this rabbit. And I want that rabbit to be 
twice the thickness of this iron, one, two, um, and then I want it to be the depth of whatever I want on that fence. So in this case, I'm gonna grab my marking gauge here, and let me actually make sure, I think this one's a little bit less than a quarter inch, if I remember correctly. No, that one's actually pretty close. So we're gonna set this one at a half inch. Um, Actually, no, I do want to make sure that it is exactly twice the thickness of this. Um, no, 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 I'm going to set it a half inch. I'm going to set it a half inch. Thinking wrong. Half inch gives me the quarter inch of the blade, like this. So we have the quarter inch of the blade and then the quarter inch of the groove that we want to cut in. There's a lot of glare going in that screen right now, just so is you there? know. Yeah. It's mainly on the what we see as the right side of the screen. This will help a little bit. Oh, oh. until it unplugs. I mean we can see it's just bright. Oh, I really need to get better plugs for this. Ah, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, that's Is that better? A little bit, yeah. Here, let me change the ISO down a little bit then. It's just that one like da ha, that's so much better. There we go. Let's actually do like somewhere around there. Thank you. <laughs> it was hurting my eyes. <laughs> okay. So um, on this one. I'd be taking this marking gauge and I'd be marking in how far in is that fence. So we're gonna do that same thing here. Start on this side and we're gonna mark in how far in is that fence. Oops, except for this is the top. I don't wanna do that. <laughs> we wanna do it down here. <laughs> there we go. This is where I wanna take the fence out. Got that. You want to come down a little ways on either end. Right. If your lines go a little bit long, that's not a problem. Can I take one of those pieces you cut off off your workbench. What do you mean? It's just glaring. Just you do your thing. Okay, you do whatever you want. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Just here, down. Is that better? Thank you. I'm not bothering anybody else, but it's bothering me. Oh, so much better. <laughs> okay, um, the other thing I want to do is now I've marked how far in the fence is. Now we want to mark how deep is the fence. So how much fence we're going to put on this. I want about a half inch. So we're going to do a half inch by a half inch rabbit. On this one, I had like three quarter inch down. You really don't need that. You only need a little bit of fence. So let's come in this half inch by half inch. We're going to draw this one all the way around the three sides. And there are our lines. So um, I'm going to cut, we need to cut all the way down on this face, and we need to cut all the way down on this face, and we'll be able to remove this little half inch by half inch stick. Well, actually, be a little less than that. So we're going to put that in here. And I'm going to come in with a chisel and we we'll make a little knife wall. It's not necessary. But it is useful You're in little ones like this. A knife wall? I know, I know. If I'm making a long cut like this, it is helpful just to start it. And then I'm going to grab my tenon saw. Your mother cut agrees with me it was too bright, so we're all good now. <laughs> <laughs> When your mother and your wife agree on something, you better go with it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to grab my tenon saw here. And we're going to go along with this. This is a Veritas tenon saw. Put it right in that groove. And we're just going to start this all the way across. The important thing is that you go all the way through the board and you come out. You want to have teeth in the middle that both come out one end and the other so that they can discharge the chips. If it loads up with chips, then it won't cut. And we're just going to cut down. So this is going to take a little while. So 
So I'm actually going to cut back here. I'm going to cut in the groove a little bit. Any questions? Yeah, this is just looking at the five yeah, missed questions. Put them in the chat below again, please, folks. Uh, Voron M asks, how long have you been using a Veritas saw and have you sharpened it once? Oh, yeah, yeah. I sharpen them every six months or so. Um, I bought my Veritas saws ooh, three years ago or so. I'm going to do this down this side as well. Give myself a little bit of a groove to follow. And this cut, I'm actually going to cut down deeper than the half inch because what we've got here is I want to cut this face all the way down to the depth of this groove. Um, I don't have to go all the way down to there yet but right now, but I want to get close to it because it'll save me time in the future. Once you get down there a little ways, it actually holds it pretty well. And you're getting this nice groove. So I'm all the way down, well past the line there, down well past the line there. Now we can cut in our other cheek. What other questions we got? Um, Do the same thing here, come back into the knife wall. I think we're caught up because I think everyone else answered everyone else's question. That's what I love about this community. There's so many people who are. Oh, there was to help one out. I did want to ask. What's that? Pup Pup Man said, Is there danger using reclaimed pressure treated lumber indoors? Um, that depends on what you clarify as danger. Um, <laughs> if I would not use it for anything having to do with the kitchen. <coughs> and if I did make something out of it, I was going to have regular contact with. I would probably seal it really, really well. Um, I don't think I would use it just because pressure treated lumber is more expensive than non pressure treated lumber. So why do that? Um, but if you get it for free, then I guess there's a few applications where you could, but most of the time I wouldn't. There are a lot of carcinogenic things in pressure treated lumber that are known to be carcinogenic even outside of California. So, let's cut down a little bit on this end. Ooh. I'm going to take a finger off. Again, going all the way through the wood so that the chips can fall out one side, then coming back all the way so that those chips can fall out. Let's see how close we are on this line. Good, going right down that line. So William Allen wants to know, can you turn any hand plane into a scrub plane? Pretty much, yeah. Open up the mouth a bit, put a camber on the iron, and you got yourself a scrub plane. I've got a couple videos showing how to do that if you want to see it. I like turning a number five into a scrub plane personally. A lot of people like me using a number four. See how close we are we're on the line there. And we need to go a good bit deeper over here. So I'm going to focus more on the far side. So Uncle Bobby's Hobby wants to know, while sharpening my Stanley number 6C, I notice its adjustment knob tightens opposite of all my other planes. Yeah. Do I have an oddball or is that correct? Um, at one point, Stanley had all of their depth adjustment knobs turning one way, and then they changed them to be the other way. So. There is a little bit of variant of that over the years. So there we go. We have our little piece that came out of that. And this cut isn't perfectly true. I saw that I went off a little bit on the backside here. So I could come in with a plane and fix that up. Or I could come in with a chisel and do the same thing. Um, where is it? There it is. So I'm just going to plane this back 
just like that. So, Trump UKJM wants to know if you use any electric tools. Oh um, yeah, from time to time. If I do, I show them in videos. Um, unless they're like, I, I just have to use it to get this project done on time. There's a few times where um, I would gladly do them all by hand. But in order to get the video out, I have to save some time. And uh, that occasionally is a pain. Okay, now, um, what we want to do is we want to actually make a groove in here. So we've got our plane that's a quarter inch. And we want to have a quarter inch groove in here this way. Um, now the problem with that is the easy way to do it would be grab a grooving plane and make a groove. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be, that'd be a great way to do it. Um, but we don't have a grooving plane, so we can't make the groove without uh, the grooving plane. So we're going to do basically the exact same thing we did here, is saw down a quarter inch on both sides. So we're going to lay out on the end how far that is in. And if we want to come down a quarter inch, that means it's got to be three quarters inch deep. So I'm going to set this mark at three quarters inch. Come down here and mark in a three quarter inch line there. Mark in a three quarter inch line here. That's how deep we want to come in. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to lay out um, the width of the groove. And so I'm going to set my iron on here. And I'm going to make the, we're making the, the tongue in here that will actually slide inside the groove. And this tongue, um, I want to make it slightly wider than my current iron. And the reason I want to do that is because I can always plane this surface back to make it thinner. Um, if this ends up being too small, I can't make it bigger. So I'm going to set this on here, and I'm going to put a mark in right there. So are you putting a tongue in the cheek? Um, yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> And then I'm going to set my marking gauge up to that mark. And we can mark oh. this side. You're loud. So Landon Marks wants to know, your bench is so nice. How do you decide on smoothing, cleaning the top again? Um, I'll probably flatten it in a couple years. But I haven't really had a need to in a while. Uh, I like the dirty bench that shows all the stains and marks from the years. Just it's pleasing to me. At some point, I'll probably replace these two jaws. Um, and I'm thinking about getting a different vise on here, but we'll see how that goes in the future. So now I need to actually cut down both sides of this cheek all the way down. And on this one, I could come in here and create a knife wall like this but it's just not going to work very well that way. Uh, so I'm going to move this over and give you a little bit different view in this one. Focus. Come on, focus. There we go. So let's cut in. I need to take this cut all the way down to depth, and then we need to cut, take the other one down to the same depth. Okay, I'm at mark here, how close am I to mark there? Yeah, pretty close. At the mark here, at the mark there. Okay, so now let's do this side here. And because I can't get that knife on there, I have to be a little more careful with it. And I'm gonna start at this end, and I'm gonna slowly lower the saw down all the way across that line, just keeping an eye on it, making slight adjustments. Going right on that line. Almost all the way across. And just like that, we're across. So the question is, which took more time, doing that or cutting the knife wall? I think they're pretty close to equal. So that's why I usually don't cut the knife wall because it's just easier to cut it. I don't have to bring out another tool for it. But I like showing both ways because a lot of people really like the knife wall. OK, 
Okay, there, and just a little ways away from it on both sides. And basically, whatever depth we cut down to is how deep our grooving plane will naturally cut. And there we go. So now, I'm going to bring in the same tool we're going to use as the cutting iron, and I'm going to use it to remove all that waste in between those two cuts. Turn it bevel down, and chop out. Just backing up a little bit each time. And this, this Camera is fun. Camera died again. You have no signal. What's that? You have no signal. Oh, no. Oh, now it's green. Now it's not a signal. Come on. Turn on. There it goes. And now it's all going to be really bright again. Let's see about there. Sorry about that. Really need to get a different cable for that. I wish I could find a different cable. There's only one manufacturer that makes a plug-in for those. And batteries only last a couple hours. Come at it from both sides. Just like carving. And I'm taking it down until I get to the cut depths. So on one end, you can actually come in from that line, as long as I trust the grain. And that's how deep I want to take it down to. Every tool in the hand tool shop is just a jig to hold a chisel. Because you can do most anything you want with just a chisel. Clockman45 asks, what type of sealer would be for, for pressure treated wood? Um, I would probably use something really thick, like an epoxy seal or a really, really heavy poly coat. And then to check the depth, you can use a little depth gauge. So I've got this one here. And so I can set this on the depth I want and adjust it down. And this lets me know where I need to do more work to get it all down to at least that depth. Yes. What do you want? Oh my goodness, you're getting too Hi, Daddy. Hi, JJ. Hey, Daddy. I see what you're doing. I spy you, Daddy. You're spying on Daddy. <laughs> what is that? What is what? This is a depth gauge that lets me know how deep I've cut. Oh. Pretty much all the way across. And it kind of actually clears it, like, cleans it. Mm, no, that Not exactly. It kind of. Do you have shoes on? I'd say you can go see what it is. Okay, I'm going to tip it around and actually use it to scratch back. This will clean out any burrs in the bottom. And there. One hour in, and we've got ourselves a grooving plane body. So now we have basically exactly what we have there. Now we need a way you want to, ask a to get this yeah. into there. I'll tell you what question you can ask. Uh, now one thing I was thinking about doing is most of them are shaped this way for right hand users. And I thought about turning this one around for a left hand, um, but I think I'm going to keep it right hand. Though it would be nice to have a left hand, other than these two are slightly different thicknesses. Hey. Yeah, this one is an ever so slightly thinner than this one. So, um, yeah, let's work with that. So the next thing we need to do is create a bed for this to go in. And I'm going to keep it this way. I want to cut it at 45 degrees so that we have a nice big bed angle on there. So I'm going to grab my unsquare. 
<laughs> What's the this is a uh, um, this is a miter square, and I put it on here, and I'm gonna eyeball about where I want. It. I want the mouth to come out about one third of the way back from the front, so I don't want the mouth to be coming out in the middle. I want it to be about one third of the way back, and that puts the iron out a little bit behind center. So somewhere around there, and there's a lot of historical mathematics of exactly where to put it, but this is where I'm going to put it, right here. There's our 45 degree bed angle. The next thing I need to do is put this chisel on here. JJ? He wants to ask a question. But What's your question, bud? Well, he wants to read a question. Oh. Here, um, no, this one. What? Vice. Vice and why? Uh, oh, I'm actually looking at getting the, uh, oh, come on, what's his name? Um, he just started making, or he's, he's taking pre-orders for a gear run twin screw uh, with a parallel setup on it. And it's, uh, oh, someone's going to post it down below. But it's basically, it's two screws and there's gears in between them. So you move one and it moves the other. Whereas this one is a, is a chain connection between them. Um, but the nice thing about that, he also has this, um, this uh, setup so that the, the two can pivot and you can have the two jaw faces unparallel. Um, and it's, it's kind of like the best of all worlds. Uh, it's like 400 and, actually I think it's like 600 something. I don't remember what he has on it. Um, oh, it's bugging me, I can't remember his name. But yeah, really, really cool vice one of these days, so. Okay, um, so what we need to do is now we have the bed angle. Hello, there we go. Now we have the, the bed angle on here. I'm going to set the chisel in place. I'm gonna put the back of the chisel on that bed angle, and I'm gonna hold it down nice and tight so it doesn't move around like that. And then I'm gonna mark off how thick the iron is. And this is gonna give me two things. Number one, it is going to tell me how thick the iron is so I know where the wedge needs to start. Because on this one, we've got the bed of the iron we have where the wedge needs to start. Well, now we need another angle of what angle is our wedge at. But the other important thing is, this also then shows us how big our mouth is on here. And so we can, uh, we, we know that when the iron comes out, the tip of the iron is gonna be right here. So the start of our wedge needs to be a little bit farther forward. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start the wedge dead on that mark. Um, so that we can always open this up, but we can't always, um, we, we can't make it smaller. So we're gonna start this with an opening that is at zero. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is I need to make the wedge. And I need to find a scrap of wood to make the wedge out of. Now originally I was gonna go over there and have a piece of quarter inch maple that would turn out really well for it. But then we were splitting this off and I thought, you know what? We got enough time. Let's make it out of the oak. Uh, so we're gonna actually make a small wedge out of this which I thought would be kind of fun. Now the wedge needs to be, now that we have this on here, we know how long our wedge needs to be. So it sticks from there out, and I want it to stick out um, a little bit farther. Uh, so in this case, we've got a lot of tools on the bench. I'm gonna have to clean these up here a minute. In this case, we've got our, our angle on here. Oop, turn it around like this. And we want our wedge to stick up f as far as we can but I don't want it running into the ferrule on this. So in this case, because I'm using a chisel, you can see how it comes out at an angle here. And I really couldn't get it to stick out very far because this ferrule is right up into the, uh, uh, into the body. So in this case, we put this on here. We can actually get a rather long, oh, come on, pull up, a rather long wedge. So I want to get it something that's like uh, four and a half inches. So it'll stick out to somewhere around here. So I need a wedge that's four and a half inches long by about an inch wide. And we're gonna make it out of this very same oak right here. So let's lay out roughly the size we want. So I'm gonna cut this back to Is it Andrew five Klein and that does the vice? Andrew Klein, there we are. Sorry, I finally got caught up on the chat now that I don't have a child on my lap. Yes, <laughs> he is a, a really cool woodworking inventor. 
um, does some interesting things. So let's cut this off at this length, and then we'll figure out where we want to pull our wedge out of this. Um, back this up. So I have a couple questions we sure. need to get What's caught that? up on. Okay, hang on. Um, the JJ's out of here? <laughs> wants to know, how often do you wax the sole of your planes? I watch Rob, is it Kosman? Kosman? Yeah. Um, do it nearly every time. Yeah, I only use it when I find it as being restrictive. Um, most of the time, it's not that much of a problem. I normally do it with my finishing planes. Oop. Ta da! Um, go down. No, lumber fell over again. Down. Oh, you want me to scroll? Um, so, yeah, I, I only do it when I, when I feel that there's a problem with it. So there's one. Now I want to cut this down to somewhere around. Okay. You, what are you gonna do? I'm just gonna... Hey JJ. Daddy's talking to you. JJ. Yes. Why don't you go play right now? Okay. All right. Thank you, bud. I was just so I want this to be somewhere around an inch and a half here. On? So I'm just going to roughly grab a mark. And we're going to cut it down to that. So I'm going to grab my tenon saw again because this is a rip cut. And the tenon saw has ripped teeth. Come on. Anytime it's catching, that usually means I'm putting too much weight into it. Got to back off the pressure, let the saw do the work. There, there's our blank we can pull this wedge out of. So let's actually get one true face on this. Put in a couple dog holes on here. Oop, bubble wrap. So let's see, la, la, la. Gre Grex where they asked, would you use wax on the saw blade? Yes, yeah, I do that quite often. If I find it binding or it's more of a pressure, I will wax up the saw blade and it works really, really well. Um, and so what I use is um, I have a block of beeswax impregnated with, um, um, with uh, raw linseed oil. And uh, this block I've been using for probably about three years and I've only used that much of it. Um, and so this will last me for many more years to come. Uh, but it's like... Uh, uh, I think it's like 50-50 oil and wax. I have a video on making paste wax where I make that block, actually. So let's flatten this sucker out. Got a chip in there. Okay. How true and flat is this? Not very. So I've got bubbling up here in the middle. I'm going to take a couple middle shavings. Let's try it again. Still a little high right here in the middle. I'm taking a really heavy shaving with this one. Yeah, that's better. Coming to the smoothing plane. There. So, um, there is our, our wedge. And this will be the back that actually sits against the iron, so it'll be something like that in there. Next, actually I'm going to take a second and clean up because I'm getting, this is what happens is I'll, I'll get working and the bench just soon gets covered in tools. And it saves me time to take a break and put these away so I have a little more bench space. So while doing that, what questions do we have? Do we have any? I think we're kind of caught up. Caught up? Cool. Uh, so oh, what are wait, you guys wait, working wait, on right wait. now? Hang on. I've, they've kind of been mixing in with the rest of the chat. So let's see. Trulian asks, how besides your superior skill can you keep that long saw cut square? Um, practice. <laughs> well, practice having a well set up plane. Um, and the, the, the problem that most people have is when they start to see themselves going off the line, they try to bring it back onto the line. 
And that is the wrong thing to do because then you're just going to get the zigzag that binds up the saw and causes you more problems farther down. Um, rather than that, you need to back up and repair where you just went off so that you're not creating new problems, you're fixing the old problems um, so you bring the line back into being true. And that's, that's where most people go wrong. Uh, what you can do is just back up and twist the saw and let the set of the teeth, the side of the teeth basically scratch out the, uh, the surface so it can bring it back into true. Fro! Um, but in, in the end, you, know, you can always video yourself so you can see your, your body posture and the way you're working it. But the best way is just more practice. The more practice you have, the better your sawing skills come, the easier it is to follow a line. Uh, it's one of those things that you know, if you go back and watch some of my early videos, um, my, my channel has been following my hand tool journey from beginning to end. And so if you go back and watch my earliest videos, you'll see that I, I had just as many problems with it. And it's one of those things you just learn over time. And the more you do it, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the easier it becomes. So eat your beans at every meal. Gonna need that, gonna need that, gonna need that. Put that away. So it's nice to have that. Brian Mulligan wants to know, what's your opinion about hitting a hold fast with a metal hammer? Um, whatever you want. I don't do it because I've got a really nice um, split-faced mallet that works phenomenally well. Um, I find that to be better to hit it with the maple than with the uh, metal, but a lot of people like using metal. I know a lot of people who use metal, ma metal hammers for their chisels. It's all a personal preference. Nothing right or wrong to it. Okay. Now, I've got to do two things with this. Number one, I've got to bring this down into the same thickness as my iron. And so I'm going to plane it down to that, but I need to mark off exactly how thick that iron is. So I'm going to set my marking gauge on here. Actually, it's set up. Oh, that's right, because the last thing I marked was the thickness of the, the tongue on this. So I'm going to use that to mark all the way around this thin piece. And then we can plane it back to that thickness. So poor man wants to know, how would a dead blow hammer work on a hold fast? Uh, it works well. I am not a fan of dead blow hammers. I, I just do not find any benefit to them. But I know a lot of people really, really like them. Uh, so, it worked great, I guess. It's, it's a hammer. Anything that it will impart force to it will work. Here. So, throw this in here, and we're going to plane it down to that line. And I'm going to use the scrub plane first. And just take off a little bit here and there. we get down close. That's why I use aluminum dogs. If I hit them with the plane, it really doesn't matter. It won't hurt them. Steel is harder than aluminum. So Gary Brown foraging on asks, I'm going to try and make a shave pony soon, but I've never used a shave horse or pony. I am just limited on space. Have you any suggestions on either the pony benchtop version or full horse? Um, if you have the space for a full horse, it is much, much easier. Um, it's just, it's, it's great to have a tool that's just set up to do it. But if you don't have the space, the benchtop version works really well. I and mean, uh, Shannon Rogers has a series on that in the hand tool school. And I actually think he has that project as a, as a separate thing you can buy. And I'm thinking about making that one of these days. Uh, just haven't uh, haven't done it. But I think that because of my shop, I don't have space for the full horse, so I'm just going to use a pony. So there we go. We has ourselves a wedge. It's still slightly thick. Make sure we take off a little bit more right here, just a hair more. And I'm going to leave it slightly thick because, again, 
just like with the plain body, I can always plane it down to what I need in the future. There we go. Get that line, um, close to that line all the way around. So, now we need to make the wedge itself. Um, and for this we need to cut an angle on here. Now that angle really doesn't matter that much. And you're going to hear a lot of people say it's got to be this angle, it's got to be that angle, and really whatever angle you want. Um, I am going to grab a straight edge. Okay, so were you trying to switch your camera view? Yes. Why? Why, why are you asking that? Mm -hmm. well, you I, I don't know what you're talking about, You adjusted the camera and didn't switch the view, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I would do without her. I wouldn't. That would be the answer. Um, so we need to make a, the wedge angle on here. Now, if you make it too steep of a wedge, like something around there, um, you're going to run into problems with it not wanting to seat itself down in. And if you make it too narrow of a wedge, uh, then you're going to run into issues with it, uh, um, with it either wedging in there and being impossible to get out or the head being too small to pull it out. Um, the other thing we're going to want is we don't want it to come to a point here. Um, I mean, eventually we will, but we're going to be cutting off that point. So why not actually start with it missing? Um, I'm going to have about an eighth inch here rather than actually coming to a point. And I'm going to choose an angle that's somewhere around there. Oop. And then I'm just going to draw that line. We are having drama being at home. <laughs> so there's, there's our wedge on there. And this will then fit down into that. Um, actually, no, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than that. I'll make it a little bit steeper than that just because I want to. Because if you make it steeper, you can always make it smaller. Yeah, let's do something around there instead. And there's a lot of guides out there that will give you, you know, 8 to 1 or 10 to 1, um, whatever you want. There, I'm going to cut it at that angle right there. So let's put this in here and cut it down. Now, I would normally use my tenon saw, but this is so thin that using my tenon saw would cause me all kinds of odd grief. So I'm actually going to use my dovetail saw because the dovetail saw is actually a rip saw. Follow that line right down. Oh no, I hit the back. And that's why we can lean down a little farther. And then we can turn around and do the other side. bit of wedge. We're going to trim that down just a hair. Put that on here. Oop. Come on up. Dogs up. Grab the smoothing plane again. I'm just going to get close because we're going to be doing more work on this in a little bit. So there is our wedge. This is what we'll be sticking down in there to create our angle. That one's actually a little bit more narrow than the last one, but that'll do. And if I really wanted to, the nice thing about this is what I've got is I've got another one here. So if I mess up this wedge, I still have this one over here, which I, for some reason I end up using this one almost as much as I use the first one. <laughs> so now that we have that wedge on there, we're going to set this in place, and we are going to transfer the line that we just created 
So that's why it didn't matter what the angle was, because now that we have this on here, we can draw that in. Line it up really nice like. Get the fingers out of the way so we don't slice them with a knife. Remember the motto, I spent enough time at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and there is our opening. So that is what we need to cut down. So on, here, let me focus on this a little more. On this line, let me pin these in. Where did my pen go? There it is. So on this first line here, now the pen's working. On that first line there, we need a straight cut down. And that straight cut down is what the chisel will bed against. But on this one here, if I make a straight cut down, there's nothing that's stopping this wedge from sliding sideways out of the plane. So I'm actually going to undercut that a little bit so that this then I can put a slight angle onto this. And when I drive this in, it actually sucks it down into place. So for this one, on this one here, I need to cut it straight down. And on this one here, I'm actually going to tip the saw at a slight angle and cut it at that. So let's actually, uh, oh, first thing I do is mark the depth of cut, which is this one here. I need to put that line over here. Right to there. And then we're going to transfer these lines with this square. So these lines where, where the side lines come up here, I'm going to put this in here and transfer that line to that depth of cut line. Do the same thing on the back here. This will just give us something to eyeball with the saw. And then put it down into here. And I'm going to grab my tenon saw. Oh, excuse me. And we're going to go right down along that line. So again, here's a point where I could use a, uh, a knife wall. But personally, I find that faster than a knife wall. But everyone's different. Let's see if I am on the line I want this side. Looks to be. Down to depth there, down to depth there. And then we're going to do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to start the cut just like we did. So now that the cut is started, I'm going to take the saw and I'm going to tilt it over just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Down there, down there. And now we need to come through and remove this waste in between. So I'm going to grab a chisel and a mallet. And we're going to pair in. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to blow out this side. So I'm going to start in here, remove a bit of material, come down a little farther. Move a bit of more material. And I'm going to get it down close to that depth line. Sorry, I'm probably blocking the view with that. Let me put this over here and focus down into the line. Ah! What did you do? Oh, I just disconnected again. Focus. Focus. Come on. Man, I hate this thing. Here, let me try it this one, see if I can get a better connection. 
You need me to take something out of the way? No, I just need... I love these cameras other than their external power supplies are horrible. Let's see, did that work? Hey, that one works. So I can move this one back over here, except for way out of focus. Let me put this one back on the other camera so we can have that one too. Technical difficulties. Huh. I'm not getting anything on that one. Come on. Oh well, I guess we're working with just the one camera right now. So, let's work on this. Grab the smaller chisel so we can get in there. Do the same thing from this end. Man, I love these chisels. If you didn't see the chisel test on Thursday, went into picking my favorite chisel and why. And then I went out and got my favorite ones from the test, which in case you didn't realize are the Richters. So you bought some new chisels, huh? I don't know what you're talking about, babe. <laughs> really? Learn something new every day. <laughs> okay, we're down close to the depth I want. But to get it all the way down, I'm going to bring in the uh, router plane. So Alan has super chatted. Ooh, it says, technical difficulties, mom joke time. <laughs> yes. So... All right, let me get my mom jokes back up. Oop. Raise that up just a little bit. Ready? Yep. Thanks for teaching me the meaning of plethora. It means a lot. <laughs> I like that one. I like anyone you tell. So the Theo Brock wants to know how much are the Narex Richters for a set? Um, they're about thirty-five bucks a chisel, which That's not is bad. no, it's it's the medium price. They're actually there are uh, there's a reason that they won my best overall, and they. Depending upon what you call, what you rank pricing, they're also my best per price as well. Um, so, okay, so if you say they're 35, so what How? What would you consider a good set? Like like a quarter inch, a half inch, and an inch? Like what? what is- A quarter, a half, a three quarter, and possibly an inch. Though I also got the three eighths, because uh, it's just a good in-between size. There's occasional ones when I want it. So and they also come with the eighth. You can also get an eighth or an inch and a half if you want those as well. So if you were trying to get like a starter package price point, I'm, th I'm helping the men with their wives for justifying costs. I don't know why. So 140 bucks, 150 by the time you do taxes and shipping, probably yeah. a little bit more than that. But if you never have to buy another set for... Yeah. And see, that's the thing for me is that, investment. you know, I use these every single day. The chisel is the most used tool in my shop. And I want something that is comfortable, something that is functional, something I don't have to worry about as much. And they hit every nick, every bit on that bill. So there is that. Now I can put this in here and see how well that lines up. That is where we want it. So now we can put in our wedge and see how close we are on that. Except for it is too long up here, so I gotta trim off this.
Now I know when I was first starting out, you know, 35 bucks a chisel would have been way, way too much. There would be absolutely no way I could afford that. Um, and so that's why I bought cheaper chisels. But now that I have a little bit more money and it's now a business for me, um, spending a little bit more on chisels is, is well, well worth it. Speaking of which, let's go okay. to three quarter inch. So I'm gonna make a lot of men happy with this comparison. If you do 35, because I'm not a I'm not a hair and nails girl, obviously. But you know, manicure, pedicure, $35, and that lasts what four, maybe six weeks, if it's a really good one. It's not a bad investment. There you go, guys. Father's <laughs> Day's coming up. I'm helping you build your case. Well, that was always the thing in our family is that if I spend money, then Sarah spends money. Equal the mouse. So Alan wants to know, is there a difference between Narex and Narex check? Um, no, um, check. It, it, Narex is a, a check company, a business a company. Is it really? Yeah. Huh. Um, So what I'm doing is I'm just taking off extra material here so that I can fit this in. Because right now it's running into the ferrule. Actually, you know what? I think it's time. I'm going to break this handle off uh. because I don't need it. So. So how did you decide on that chisel is now going to become? Because um, I got my, I replaced it with this one. Is that your? Is this that is the Nerex. The Nerex. Yeah. Um, let me grab a screwdriver. Am I a purse lady there, Sarah? I have a purse because I have children <laughs> and I have to carry things. So with these cheap Harbor Freight ones, I can just break this ferrule off. And then I'm actually gonna be coming in here with a screwdriver and tearing up the wood because I don't want to use a chisel to tear off the wood. Just like that. We got rid of the wooden handle. <laughs> wow, that's a mess. Okay, so we can put this in here, put the wedge in. Yeah, now we're starting to get a good feel in here. So I'm noticing with this line, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So now from here on out, we're gonna be doing a lot of fitting. We wanna get this wedge to fit nicely into this gap. And so if you look closely here, you'll see that I have a, a gap up here and it's nice and tight back here. So that means I need to either adjust the angle of the, of the slot or I need to change the angle of the wedge itself. And in that case, I'm actually gonna change the angle of the wedge as that is a little bit easier. So I just need to take a couple shavings off higher. So I'm gonna start back here, take a shaving off from here to here, back it up. And each stroke, I'm gonna take a little bit longer and a little bit longer and a little bit longer until I get it from one end to the other. And let's see what that does. And it's gonna be a lot of this just fitting back and forth and back and forth and seeing how it comes in from one side. Oops, let me flip it over. Yeah, that one's pretty close. Need to do a little more. So I'm probably gonna do this like twice, twice more. Just take off a little bit there, a little bit there, each stroke. It's a little longer, so we go from one end to the other. Test it again. And I know this probably will not work, but I don't want to, I don't want to take off more until I get a chance to test it because I want to make sure I'm getting a nice tight fit. Okay. And I'm watching the gap here getting smaller and smaller. Or do you need me to do it? Okay. Do you, okay. Hey, are you gonna use Disney Plus then from your phone? Or do I need it? So let's take off a little bit more. And that should be pretty close to enough to get rid of that gap. Yeah, see there? Now I've got a really nice tight fit all the way top to bottom. Now the only thing I have in here is that this face of the wedge is 90 degrees to this side, but I cut that slot at a slight angle. So now I want to duplicate that angle on here. So I'm gonna put this on here with this face flush with the top of the bench. 
And I'm going to let the plane ride on the bench over here and then over here on the wedge Jeez, so that it's naturally at an angle. Can you refocus? Oh, sure. Back up a little bit here. There. That's a little better. And so when I let it ride on the bench, it's naturally going to create an angle on there. The question is, is that angle sufficient or not? And I want to make sure I take a shaving all the way from one side to the other side every time. I'm going to put it in here, and whew, I got lucky on that one. Let's just see what we got. Most of the time it takes two or three tests. I think this one actually came out really close to what I wanted. Nice. And so I'm looking up here at the top. Um, focus on this. And I want to make sure that I have a nice tight connection all the way across here. If this top were flat, then there would be a gap here at the bottom and not up there. But that is actually what I want. So now the next thing is, with this tongue of the, the um, man, how did it come up with that much extra on there? Huh. Apparently I messed up something because this tip should have been back here and they didn't oh, notice that until just now. Chair. So I did my mouth on this is gonna be pretty big. I'll show you. My mouth on this one is about an eighth inch, which is a fairly big mouth. But for a grooving plane, that's okay. Um, on this one, it's actually a little bit more than an eighth inch. Uh, so this will have a little bit bigger mouth than others. But for a grooving plane, that's not a huge issue. It's not something that I'm worried about the detail on it. Uh, so the next thing I wanna do is I want this wedge to have an angle here because right now, as I would cut into it, I want something to discharge the chips out the side. Let me actually take this one out. It's been a while since I've taken this one out. Okay, let me get the big tools. <laughs> Kids are in the shop. All right. So, let's remove this wedge. And so this back here allows you to get right into there. You can take that wedge out. And so what we want to do is create this little angle here on the side that will allow it to discharge the chips coming out that way. So let's take this wedge out. Now this project took some blood. So. Do you Let's see, we've got this go wedge all good in there, but we need to actually, oh, I didn't mark that, I should have done that. Put it back in, just not all the way. And we want to actually create where that angle comes back. So I'm gonna come back about three quarter inch from the tip, and I'm gonna draw a line here, parallel with this. And then I'm gonna draw a line about an eighth inch from the tip, and that's where I want it to terminate at. And so now, I'm going to grab some sacrificial wood here. Maybe, if I can find some. Again, don't mind hurting. There we are. And I'm going to chop this tip off. So I'm just going to take a three quarter inch here. I'm going to put it in that line that was right up by the front. Hold this down. Chop that tip off. And then now I'm going to actually pair it back so we get that angle on here. Hold this on here. And actually, let's do this the safe way because I'm going to slice my finger open again. So I'm going to put the hold fast in here. Let the hold fast hold this down in. And then we can do this come in here and slowly pair it all back down to that tip. There, just like that, we've got a nice, clean, feathered edge all the way down. Do one more pass. Just taking that curl off. There we go. And that should be a functioning wedge. The next thing we need to do is create a hook on here that we can use to pull it out if it ever gets jammed in like we did earlier. 
So in this case, I just want to round this off a little bit. I'm going to put that back in here. I'm going to grab this. Papa says hi. Hi, Papa. Uh, Papa, am I in there? Oh, my mind's been on, but Papa just joined. So, oh. Papa and my mind are the kids' grandparents on my side. That side. So we're gonna no, use that. Just say your parents. I just put it on you. <laughs> What's that? You could have just said your parents. I could have. Okay. But if they're my parents, then they'd be mom and dad. Sharpie. Oh, should I tell your parents how you've been channeling your grandfather now? Sharpie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I put the sharpie down. Like, oh, the sharpie. Sorry, Melody, change the ice on this. Ah! Stop. Okay. You guys are gonna go. I said cereal. Yes. Okay. Are there carrots? Here. So we're gonna do the round on this side. We're rounding it off, making it a little, making it a little bit prettier. I don't know. Or frosted flakes. If I really wanted to make it nice, I'm going to grab a file. And I could just come in here and round it that way. And round it that way. Okay, do you guys see what Daddy's doing? And then I'm going to take off, I'm going to cut, break the edges on this just so that they're not harsh, hard edges. And then I need to create this hook. And so to do that, all you're doing is you're cutting a cut down and then chipping into that angle. Do you need a band -aid? Did you cut yourself? I cut myself a while ago. Do you need a band-aid? So, no, I'm good. Here, go get Daddy a band-aid. So I'm going to cut this in just a quarter inch or so. Go get Daddy a band-aid. You should have gotten the band-aid. You're my little husband. And then you can come in with a chisel and pair back a line to that cut. Oh, no. So, C. Bryant Bear wants to know, or wants to know how long you plan on being on for. You got, you got um, I'm okay. guessing it's about another oh, half hour, 45 oh, minutes, actually. The small clogs, and you can take it to Daddy. No, 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 you need shoes on, remember? That's the rule in the shop. No, <laughs> go get shoes on, and you can go in the shop. Okay, so there is our wedge. Um, this corner, shaking. though, yeah, let me zoom in a little bit more. Why are they shaky? I don't know. There's vibrant, like, nope. Focus. Well, eat something. Um, this corner is a bit sharp, so I just want to round that off a little bit because any sharp edge, that's where fibers can get caught and tear off. So I'm just going to grab that file. Are you have shoes on? Why just round that over. And that is all that you really need. Now, the wedge, the head comes in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. Oh, a band-aid! Thank you, Melody. <laughs> And so over the years and different places, you will find them shaped in all different ways. And in different traditions, you will find them shaped in all different ways. Melody gave it to him, but you can go see what he's doing. What? Melody! It's fine. Okay, guys. Hey, guys. I already had shoes on. Arthur and Melody. Listen. Hey, guys, look at me. Yes, son? No talking. You want to go see what he's doing, though? You can come over here, but no talking. So there is our wedge. We can put that in here, and we can put in our iron. Now let's actually take this thing for a test drive and see what we've got. Uh, here, I'm noticing something. Actually, I got to fix it on here. Um, the the tip of the wedge is actually sticking out past the the bed down in here. So I actually have to shave that off a little bit more before we go any farther. So let's grab this and let's pair it back a little farther so just like we did before just a couple more shavings and we'll see how that comes down 
ability to watch the chat. There, that's right. And stopping. Now the tip of the wedge is stopping just before it comes to the bed here. So it doesn't it isn't sticking out into this. And that's what we want. Except for the blade is in upside down. Um, so let's see, is this sharp enough? Yeah, it's sharp enough to play with. I'll sharpen it up a little bit later. We're gonna put it in, keep it back a little ways so we can tap it forward. Grab our iron or, or uh, mallet. Dad. Tap the wedge down in. Just a second, Mel. And now I'm going to tap this forward until it's just sticking out. Actually, it was a bit too far. Yes, Melody? Old Man Fred asks very simple design. Where would I post it? I don't know what you're talking about. Old it's man probably Fred. a message with mommy. Fred. I yeah, I, I, I know. I don't know what he's, what design he's referring to. Um, cool. The iron is sticking out just a hair. Set the wedge in there. Now let's take this for a test drive and see what we got. Here, it's sticking out a bit more than I normally want, but hey, first pass, and. I do say that is a functioning grooving plane, just like that. Now the problem is this is incredibly uncomfortable on the hand. This is uncomfortable up here. And there are a lot of different things we're gonna do that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make this look a little bit prettier, and then we're going to get into the finishing of it. But right now, here, let me actually back it off a little bit. Tapping on the nose drives the iron back. And now it's out, so it's not gonna take anything. No, taking a little bit. <laughs> so let's actually drive it forward just a tap. Old man Fred was talking about an old, there we a go. small steps That's what I'm looking for right there. Oh, these are happy. Perfect little curls. We got ourselves a grooving plane. <laughs> that is what I like. So, now let's actually make this thing a little bit more pretty, and uh, we will have a little bit of fun with this. Oh, sorry, what, Melody, what was that? Um, poor man, um, poor man told me that Fred was talking about a small step stool design, and poor man Fred, old man Fred was talking was talking was asked again can you post pictures on hive mind oh, oh he, the step stool that i made no uh he made one for the kids at church oh okay cool his own design so small step yeah. stool design. let me grab some built on a couple of these ah here's a good one okay. so now when it comes to the actual shaping of hand planes there are lots of different oh. traditions on how exactly it should be done Here. i'm gonna grab a couple of these and show you some of my favorites, wipe your hands off. if I can get them out. There we go. Here. So I will hand you a piece. Dirty hands this off. one oh, is one. is fairly oh. traditional. Mm. It's, why is it so dark? Mm -hmm. You're playing yeah. on a switch if you want to go play. Mm -mm. I'm not very game person. Okay. Um, so this, you have a little bit of a rounded surface back here, so that the palm can work into that. Um, it was very common to have a light angled chamfer back here and then a light angled chamfer that comes all the way around. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of them would have a square nose in the front. And this chamfer would then terminate into an eye here coming down into a square. That was a fairly common for a lot of different, uh, a lot of different designs. Um, some will uh, do, it's the same thing on here with the, the rounded back, the chamfer coming up and over, and then into a square on here in the front. But this is a really sharp chamfer, where this chamfer actually rounds out onto the main surface. Um, and so some of them, like this one I actually made, has the chamfer coming all the way down to the face. Um, and it's just, you know, slightly different designs in different ways. I'm actually, my favorite design is the one I made for my first one. And I found it to just be most comfortable. And that is, you round the back here in both directions so it's nice and calm, fit in the palm. Then the next thing is you hold it here. So why not put a rounding here and a rounding here so it fits into your hand here. And then I keep the front into a point, but just round over the corners just in case I grab it like that. 
Um, and then normally what I'm going to come do is come in and put in a chamfer. Since this is one of my first ones, um, I didn't do that on this one, but I'm actually going to do that on the new one here. So we want to actually shape the back end here, the front end, where the fingers come around, and then this base up here, where the finger comes around this way, so you can actually kind of grab it like a horn. Um, I, I did that when I, um, when I first made this one, thinking I would grab it more like that. I don't grab my finger around there, so I don't put in this round anymore. I just put in the one up here and the rounding on the nose. Uh, so let's actually make those in there. Any questions right now? Are oh, you having biltong without me? Would you like me to give you a piece? Uh, I don't I'll get him. You want to take it back to him? Uh, grab this file and grab this rasp. Uh, Thank you, Melody. Biltong. Good done. Beef biltong. Thank you. Mmm. My dad's got a snack seat. All right, that's good. So I'm gonna grab a rasp, a fairly heavy cut on here. I'm going to take off this corner. Um, zoom in here a little more. So you can see what we got going on here. Yes, Melody? No, I meant, um, do you want to ask him? What? I didn't know if she wanted to do some rasping. Oh, um, um, sure, come on around over here, maybe in a moment here, we'll do this with a file. So I'm going to take off this corner over here as well. Now this is the back of the plane. And this is where my palm is going to go in, so I want it to be nice and flat across here. What are you doing, Molly? So now I have a, a big chamfer on either corner. I'm just going to round those off each a little bit. I'm going to take that big chamfer. I'm going to come at it from all angles and just get a rough edge on here, a rough shape on here. Melody, no. And we're getting close to the shape we want. And so I'll start down here low, and then I'm going to wrap it up around as I go. Here, I'll let you do the file here in a minute, Melody. Mm -hmm. I've done this before. Whoa. It kind of reminds me of the edge okay. of the heart. And then as I'm going, I'm going to be putting my hand in there and seeing, does that feel good? Do I want a little bit more? Where do I need a little bit more on there? Okay, Melody, you want to try the file? Okay, so now that we have the rough shape in here, we're going to come in with a finer file. Let me just do this and I'll show you. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to get rid of all the scratches we just made from that last file. Okay, now you want to try? Come around over here. Come around over here. All right. And not the best at once. No, but you're doing good. Okay, I'm going to grab the next finer file while you're doing that. So, Running Wolf Kenpo asked, is there a specific wood you like to make these planes from? Um, whatever, I have, whatever I have on hand. Uh, here I'm using white oak, which is one of my favorites. Uh, historically, beech or maple are the better choices, historically, but eh, whatever you got. All right, let's see. We want to actually feel this and see where do we still need some work to be done. You did good, Melody. Well, I'm here because I didn't clean up the end with a plane. I'm just going to come at it with a file. Melody. Just getting rid of all the scraps. Are you singing Let It Go? That was it. Yeah, cool. Then we're coming with a finer file. Oh, that's remove, kind of small. Yep. Remove any marks that the last one made. I think that's the smallest file I've ever seen. I got smaller files over there, Melody. I really want to know what your smallest file. It's mm. really smooth. And there. And then we can just test as we go and see, you know, is there any rough spot? Is that where I want? 
Um, we're going to do some more chamfer work on that here in a minute. Next thing I want is an area up here where my thumb can go across because that square just doesn't feel very good. And a lot of these with the light chamfer, that, that still just doesn't feel very good to me. So if I want it to come in here, Melody, Melody, no. and I'm going to make marks, I want to come through here and here. I'm going to stick this around into here. I'm going to grab, grab my heavy rasp again. Melody, no. why don't you go back over there? Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to remove the large chunk of the material here. Like that. And do a matching one over here. Like that. And then while I'm here, I'm also going to do these corners. I'm not going to do as much as I did on the back. I'm just going to do the corner. Take that off of 45. Take that off at 45. Just round them over a little bit. Just like that. And then I'm going to come in with my finer file. And I'm trying to make a, a scratch that goes from one side all the way around to the other. Doing this really makes metal workers mad. Because you should never go both ways with a file. All right, so let's see how that feels. Got that up there. That's good. Need to take a little bit more back off here. I feel this corner rubbing in me a bit. See? Oh yeah, that's better. Then we can come in with the finer file. Get rid of scratches from that one. I have questions when you're ready for Yeah, yeah, go for it. So Theo Brock asked, how thick is your plane? I'm thinking about getting a molding plane billet from Red Rose Reproductions. Would one inch work? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, well, this is inch and three eighths. So basically, what you want to do is you want to have the thickness of your iron, the thickness of the uh, of the, the tongue you want left over, and then the thickness of your fence. And so usually, if it's if you want a quarter inch, you're going to have quarter inch by quarter inch by about three quarters. So you have an inch and a quarter. But you could get by with just a half inch fence over here. So you'd have a quarter inch, quarter inch, and a half inch. In which case, a one inch blank would work fine. A personal preference on how much material you want on there. I think for me, I would like an inch and a quarter for one like this. But again, everybody's different. And so this is just a series of different files, finer files. And then coming in and cleaning them out. Jacoby Spell asks, could you close the mouth by putting a strip of veneer behind the chisel or a strip of built on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, you know, if the if the mouth were much bigger, I probably would do something like that just to build it up a little bit. But in this case, it, it's really not that much of a problem. You don't need a fine, fine mouth for a grooving plane. Um, but, you know, some people are picky about that, so go for it. Okay. So there is my rough shaping. Now what I want to do is eat a little bit more biltong. Um, oh, do you have them? No, I got some. Oh, okay. So I'm going to put a chamfer on the top corner on both sides because I like the look of a light chamfer. Now, a lot of the traditional ones, the chamfer is an angle like that. And so it's a really, uh, really steep angle. So we're basically going from this to like that. I actually like to make it a bit more. I don't want to make it quite 45. I want to actually do a bit more than normally is done. Mm, grain is majority this way.
something right around there. I like that look. Then just ease the edge just a little bit so it's not sharp on your hand. There, that's pretty. Now I want to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going until the two match. Doesn't really matter what exactly that chamfer is, how big it is, whatever you want. This is your painting, your happy little wood curls. Make it whatever you want. There we go. It's not real money. Uh, buying things from the shop in the game? No, not right now. Uh, James or JJ Daddy said no. Daddy said no right now. Not right now, but <clears throat> we'll look at it later. <clears throat> He's playing it on my account right now. Now we're just coming through and doing a lot of the little detail things. We're feeling it. We're seeing where we want some more work on here. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to round this nose over just a little bit more. Actually, let's do it this way. You know, every time I make a molding plane, I change it ever so slightly. I change my, my design and shape a little bit more. So I really like the look of that eye. So I'm going to do something kind of similar to that. And then just round it into this front nose. There, I like that. Do the same thing on this side. Smooth it out. Just adding that little bit of chamfer right down the nose. I'm going to do the same thing on the back, too. This is where you can get really, really picky, and this whole project could yeah. become a lot longer just by how much you're putting into this and how smooth you want this to be and what your your finish on it is. I'm just gonna break the edges. Right, now you can ask them. Yeah. Do you not mind if we do any more questions? Yeah, yeah. Questions, go for it. What you got, Mel? Bill Palmer asked, are vintage. vintage wood grass files better than more modern ones? That is a great way to start an argument. Um, well, when you look at rasps, like this one, this one is machine stitched. So here we zoom in on this. So all of these were put in by machine. And it makes it much cheaper because a machine doing this is a lot faster than someone just doing this by hand. The problem with that is that means they're all in lines and you get an even bounce on this. So if it hits a certain frequency, this thing will bounce around on the wood. Whereas on the hand stitched one, there isn't any frequency to them because they're all in random locations. Um, the problem with hand stitched is that they're all at slightly different depths and some of the teeth stick out a little bit farther. And so the really, 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 really nice ones, to get that clean finish on them, they could be upwards of $100 a piece for a good, for a good rasp or more. Um, and so the antique hand-stitched ones feel really, really good when you're using them. 
but some of the hand stitched ones are good and some of them aren't. You've got to play it by hand. Um, so it really kind of depends down to personal preference of, you know, how much do you care about that or not. Um, I actually don't have any, like, I mean, this one, this one is like a, uh, this is an old, is this one, yeah, this is a Nicholson. Um, and it is probably 60, 70 years old, but it was machine stitched. And I really like it. So, yeah. I really haven't spent much money on getting high quality rasps and files because I can usually pick up old cheap ones at, at garage sales and things that have a bucket of files. And so I'll buy a whole bucket and I'll throw out about half of them and I'll keep another, I'll keep a quarter of them and the other quarter gets set in the corner or given to other people. Um, and so that's, that's where I get most of my files from. I rarely buy new ones other than my saw sharpening files. Okay, now we have this knot here. And I think I'm going to keep it just the way it is. I like that little bit of naturalness in there. Yes, I could have cut the plane a little bit thinner and gotten rid of that knot. But I just kind of like that bit of character in there. So let's see. How comfortable is this? That is that's pretty good. I'm liking that. Let's just ease over the corner on this. And ease over the corner on this. And I think that is good for that. So the next thing we need to do is get this thing ready for, for finishing. And so for that, we're going to scrape it. Any questions? Let's back up a little bit. Why don't you go out there for a little while? Okay. We'll be done in a little while, Maldi. So let's scrape this thing. And... I'm just getting rid of any imperfections on the surface. Getting rid of any marks. Got a, uh, a good mark to get rid of on the top here. So the top's gonna take me a little bit longer. Good card scraper is a fantastic thing. When you get it down, you get these really nice curls coming from it. Actually, I'm going to use the plane, and I because I made that mark on the top when I made for the original rabbit, and I made it on the wrong edge, so I'm going to get rid of that. So, what do you guys think? Should I give this one away? Since I already have one, I think I should give it away on the live here. So, when we're done with this, the last thing we'll do is give this one away. Whoa. So, um, for those of you who are live, thank you. Oh, well, some people just got off a few seconds ago. They're going to miss out. So, I need to know what criteria to give this away. We need criteria. Oh. Well, you got over like a thousand people watching right this second. So, a um, thousand people live? You have 1069 concurrent viewers right this moment. 1069? 1069. Huh, cool. So. So, we're going to come up with something on here. And I'm going to give this away to someone. I'm going to send this very plain, with all of its quirks and oddities, out to one of you. So we're just going through, and we're scraping, and we're smoothing, we're getting rid of any nicks. Any places where the plane went against the grain. So the question is, are you going to brand it to make it an official wood by grain? Yeah, yeah. And a little bit more. <laughs> this knot is making it fun right here because half the grain is going one direction, half the grain is going the other direction. Maybe I should do, what is my favorite wood? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, oop, need to do some work on the, fin in the ends here because this is still rough from the saw. So we're going to clamp this down. 
and just file off the rough spot. You can do the same thing on the other end. Yeah. So Sandy Masquet said, how about an auction with the proceeds going to Sarah's hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Porman says, yeah, that brand really carries a bunch of weight. I need to get it on my hand screw clamps you made for your brand. Yeah, good luck finding those. Those are harder and harder and harder to find. What branding irons? No, the handy the clamps. Oh. Okay. I think that is about it. Let's set this in. Take her for a test drive. Uh, that's the other thing I gotta do still. Yep. Because I, I left when I made this groove, I made it slightly thicker than my iron. So right now my iron is thinner than the groove. So when I run this through there. Um, eventually this will wedge up in there and it won't go forward. So I need to plane this surface down um, until it is flush with the iron. So I'm going to do something here that's really going to scare some people. I'm actually going to plane it with the iron in place. <sighs> but this is going to give me two things. Number one, it will smooth off the wedge because the wedge is sticking up a little bit more. Oop. Let's actually tap this all the way down in so I'm not hitting the iron. And I'm going to go until I'm really close to the iron. Right there. Now I'm going to take the iron out. Do a couple more shavings. Because I want that tongue to be a little bit thinner than the iron. I'd rather the iron stick out just a hair than have it perfectly flush. The proceeds seem to go to James's new cable fund. <laughs> or a better battery fund. Oh. <laughs> That's probably a better I wish I could. Okay, let's take her for a test drive. Actually, nope. Let's just do the last smoothing with the card scraper. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Okay, shiny test drive. On over there again. What's that? Got a lot of shininess going on. Oh, my ISO popped back up again. Yeah. If I knew how to fix it, I would. Well, the, the problem is it's on auto. Oh. And if I turn it off of auto, then I got a bunch of other issues that I gotta mess with. Here. Let me do this. That should be a little better. Mm, not really, but okay. Yeah. Just scraping along the bottom, getting the finest of fine wedges, or shavings. I'm going to do a little bit tighter than that. There we go. It's actually a little on the heavy side, but still fully functional. So let's take this groove right down to its depth and see where we end up at. Now, I have not sharpened this iron, so I could probably use that. And there we go. Right down to depth. So, let's see how accurate this thing actually is. Let me grab my calipers. This is one of the fun parts where you get to see just how precise you were. Except for my calipers have disappeared. 
Uh-oh. Oh, they're over there. Don't they? Are they by me? Mm-hmm. Don't I see them? Oh, right here? Yep. Okay. Let's see just how accurate this groove ends up being. So this should be a quarter inch. It is currently 2.6. So it's going to leave a little bit at the bottom that is slightly thicker than a quarter inch. And it is uh, 2.26. So it's actually not quite a quarter inch deep. So I could fix that by taking this groove down a little bit more. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. I've got a little bit of time here. Before we do the finish. And oh, I needed to know how wide the groove itself was. So the groove was, well, it's the thickness of the iron. I can't change that. So that's 2.43. So it's slightly thinner than a quarter inch, but I knew that because my iron is slightly thinner than a quarter inch. Uh, so let's actually trim this down a little bit, and I think we'll be ready for finish then. <laughs> so Foreman says, for reference, uh, James went from firewood to working plane in two hours and 30 minutes. Actually, like, the working plane was just over an hour. But then you got all this other stuff to Oh, was it make just it. the tweaking? Yeah. There you go. Uh, let's see, where is... There it is. So I'm going to grab this. And it's just a hair too thick. Yep, that's going to be just a hair too thick. I end up rubbing up the sides more than I want. So I'm trying to find a file that will work. There you go. And this will let me work on that bottom. Number one, it'll flatten it out. Number two, I can take it down a little farther. I'm going to grab one that's a little more aggressive. Just a little more aggressive. Be Something aggressive. that reminds me about my wife. Did you just call me aggressive? The proper term is assertive. I thought it was vigorous. <laughs> Very vigorous. <laughs> there we go. So I can do that a good while to take it down a little deeper, or I could come in with a saw and cut each face down a little bit more and then pare it out. Uh, actually, let's do that. Just going to go down a hair more. Just down there. And there. And then I'm going to come in with my quarter inch. We're going to pair it all out to that. That's how I cut myself earlier. <laughs> Hit the same spot. So you're saying that ch chisel sharp? No, I hit the corner of the wood. Um. Coming soon, episode two, how to make a chisel from a nail and a dozen toothpicks. <laughs> So on Common Truth says, practice helps shave the time. How many grooving planes have you made? Um, I think this is my fourth grooving plane. Um, actual hand planes, it's probably like 30th or something like that. So there's that. I reopened the cut. Do you need another band-aid? So, no. There's that. That's in. Let's adjust this down. Where did my mallet go? There it is. It's hiding under the board. Seat the iron all the way down. Tap it forward just one more. Let's see how much deeper we can go now. Oop, we're going too deep now. So, what we can do to adjust the iron, for, uh, iron back is hit it back here.
and I'm not taking much of anything. So we're gonna give it one little tap. Here we go. I'm cutting it a little tight. Got a very, very light cut. Let's make it a little bit heavier. There's right about where I like it. Oop. Clogged up. I'm running into, because I drilled all these holes here, and so it's actually getting all of these chips inside here. And those tiny little chips are coming out and clogging up the mouth. There we go. I think that's down to depth. Yep. Uh, let's wax. Oh, we'll put the finish on and wax this up. And there we go. Let's see how deep we are now. I want it to be right at a quarter inch. So we are at, ha! Oops, bumped it. Come on. Come on. All the way down, there we go. We are at uh, two, uh, a point two five seven. So ever so slightly over a quarter inch. But that is what I want right there. So there. We have a grooving plane. Now we're going to add some finish to this. So what questions we got? Uh, nothing. Nothing? And uh, we are going to use a high-tech polyurethane to finish this. No comments? Like BLO. <laughs> so let's pull this apart. And let's get out polyurethane da, da, da. it's been a few days since I've opened it I know a lot of people tell me put uh, Vaseline or th I have put Vaseline on this it's just I've been using it for so many years that there's like a good eighth inch of cured BLO on the outside of this thing and we're going to finish this down this is my favorite part where the oak comes through here let me, let me focus in and show you this Oh, thank you. Okay, focus. It's almost too dark, but that's okay. Right here I can do... That's good. Right there. Right there? Yep. There. And we'll get the color of this all coming out. I love oak. This would be the very reason right here. So, uh, we need to come up with a way to give this away. Um, I don't know. Is there a way like you can pull all the viewers' names? I don't know. Is there? Mommy. Come on, honey. So what's my character? Uh, let's see. I'm thinking of a number. Oh dear. That's what I do with the kids. He tries to kill me when he does these ones. <laughs> <laughs> a number between one and a million. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, Melody. What question should I ask this about is me? Oh, I love this seeing the rays pop out in the end grain here. Oh, so pretty. Showing off this little knot in the side. So yeah, this is one of these really fun weekend projects. And a lot of people are scared of doing planes. But if you make an open-sided plane like this, they are incredibly easy to make. And if you mess one up, then hey, you've just wasted an hour or two on it. It's not that much. And, you know, if I'm not actually shooting the video and talking about it, I can probably get this down to, you know, 45 minutes from firewood to working plane. Two hours to be done with a be putting finish on. Alan says, give it to whoever super chatted. Ooh, except for that's illegal. <laughs> yeah, giveaways have interesting rules. So there. Let's let this sit, and we're going to then um, 
Well, I'm, I'm going to be working on this throughout the rest of the day, but basically for the finish, I'm going to let it sit for 15 minutes or so until it soaks up enough. And then I'm going to come back in and put some more on it and put some more out. Probably do three or four coats and let it soak in over the course of the day. And then I'm going to wipe off the excess and apply paste wax, which I have a couple of videos on that. So, back this camera up, see if there's any last minute questions and do a giveaway. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, go ahead and throw those in the chat. We will get to those. Here, I'm going to back this up a little farther. See if I can I, back up. I farther. don't see any last minute questions. Um, so yeah, for the, the finish on this, I'm just going to let the boiled linseed oil soak in. And as it soaks in, I'll add more and more over the, the course of the day. And then I'm going to use paste wax, which <laughs> I finally ran through my Minwax paste wax. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to actually use the can. So my last batch that I made, I filled up the can because it makes a really good can for paste wax. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Just wipe that on. Let it sit on the surface for 15 minutes or so. Uh, and then come back and polish it off. I want to wait until the thick coating of that on the surface can set up and harden. And then I can come back through once the thinners have come out and actually polish it down. And that will get, that will fill in all the pores and seal it in place and, and be a nice uh, finish for it. Uh, so, uh, question. Let's do a question that is for people who've been here a long, long time. Um, Ah, here is a good one. What was, so we're going to give this away to the first person to put into the chat. So just know that your speeds might be different. Yeah, and so your, your name may be at the top of your, your list, but it's the one that's at the top of this list that matters. Um, so the, uh, the first person to type into the chat with the item that I first made, my first woodworking project, uh, what was that? In life or as in wood in by life. Right? Well, you've asked that one before. I have, but this is more of, well, I, I, I've talked about it. I don't know if I've ever asked it. Um, but does, this your is mother get to been, does your mother get to comment? See if she knows. <laughs> How well does she know me? Um, so whoever answers it first wins this um, plane. I'll get that in the mail. Um, but yeah, this is, this is one of these things that, uh, you know, a plane is, is a very scary thing to do. Uh, but once you try one, you realize, oh, it's really not that hard. Now, they get more difficult if you want an integral plane. Um, but if you want an integral plane with this, you could slap another piece on the outside and have that done. Um, but to actually cut a solid hole, those become a little more difficult, which I do have a couple videos on doing that as well. But this is a great beginner project for that. So let's see. A mallet? No. Mallet? No. Pinewood Derby car. The poor man gets it. See, that wasn't that hard. <laughs> So thank you. Um, yeah, and it, it, get in, try it out. And especially if you got extra time in the shop now, it's a great time to experiment and play with new things. So have fun turning firewood into something useful. So yeah, uh, poor man, send me your address again. I don't remember if I have that one on file. And I'll get this one too, because I know you've bought a couple things from me. So thank you. You're out of focus, by the way. But we've had a couple um, questions come up. Do you okay. want to answer those? Yeah, let's do quick? some questions. And oh, and time. we got a super chat. So Uncle hey. Bobby's hobby says, you've always been nice to answer my question and offer advice and encouragement. Um, okay, hang on. I got a mom joke. I'm adding boiled linseed oil to this as I'm watching it soak into the end grain. Just adding a little bit more. All right, are you ready? Yep. I'm pining for a good tree pun. I wish they were more popular. <laughs> All right, there were a couple questions. Hang on. Uh, I had to throw a woodwork. Um, cello. Yes, a cello is my first woodworking project. Although I, I am, I'm thinking sometime in the next year or two, I want to make a guitar because um, I want to take, I want to teach myself guitar, and I thought it would be a fun time to do with my daughter. So okay. We'll so David Brodingham says, any kind and branch of files and rasps you would recommend. Um, the, the only files that I buy new um, are the, my saw sharpening files um, because the, to have a good, a good file that works well, that works efficiently, that doesn't vibrate too much, um, that's, that's very important to me. And I buy the, the Baco files. Uh, the, um, um, Lee Valley actually sells a, a kit 
Um, so they're, they come in this wrapped and oh, they sell really Baco files. Just so you know right Am now. I? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. There you go. That's better. Um, so yeah, the Baco files, um, those are the ones that I, I get for saw sharpening. For regular woodworking, I, one of these days I want to get a good set, um, but it, it's one of those things that's way down in the list. And for the price that they are in comparison to the output, I, I haven't seen a huge benefit from that. And so that's why most of mine are antiques that I buy at garage sales and the such. Um, I'll buy, because they, they sell them in buckets for you know, five, 10 bucks and you get 100 files. And most of them are trash and they've all been rubbing against each other. So none of them are really great, but you eventually find a few in there that you like and work well. And that's, that's the way I buy most of mine. What's next? Let's see. Um, Macy J asks, what's the softest wood you'd risk using for this? Um, you know, honestly, if you make it out of pine, you can get a functioning tool out of pine. It will not last as long. In other words, it will dent up more and it will eventually wear away. <laughs> but it would be really easy to make. And hey, if you run out, then you know you just wasted two or three hours. Oh well, go make another one, two or three hours. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't make it out of balsa. Um, but if you had a, a thick piece of pine or making it out of a two by four, that would be, that'd be a great use for it. Um, go for it. Is it gonna be the best plane ever? No, but it'll work fine. Um, for regular constant use, uh, I don't think I would go much cheap, much softer than like walnut. Um, yeah, poplar would be yeah, a bit too small for uh, soft for long-term use, but doesn't mean you can't make it out of poplar. It just uh, it will probably wear out a little bit faster. What else? Is that it? I think that's it. I was, cool. I was going to remind everybody to join with by Right Hive Mind on Facebook if you're not already. Yeah, you go to Facebook, search for Wood by Right Hive Mind, and that's where I bounce a lot of ideas off of people and kind of do a shout, a shout out, and people can uh, um, show things that they're working on and ask questions. And it's a, a fun little group. Um, but yeah, I'm going to finish finishing this up. Looking forward to sending it off to you, uh, poor man, and thank you for your support. You have been with this channel for a very, very long time, so thank you. Uh, I think that will do it for today. So uh, thanks everyone for coming. It's been, uh, what, almost three hours? Two, 40, 50, and counting. Cool. Well, I think I'll do it. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. And I'm holding this position until she finds it. Oh, I should just. She's going to wait for a while. <laughs> yeah, nope, here we go. <laughs> <laughs>